How to create a vector honeycomb pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create this honeycomb pattern in Illustrator. So let's jump right on in. I'm going to keep this here just so I can reference what I've done and make something that looks similar. Otherwise I might get off and it might look a little funny. Um, what this is, is just an RGB uh, document, eight and a half by 11. I went ahead and created a uh, two layer uh, setup so that I've got this black in the background, just so it can show up really nice. And then my art will go in this one and then you just click over here to lock that layer. So if you wanna do something similar, just um, come over here and create a new layer and lock the back layer, which has your uh, fill, whatever fill you want. So first thing you wanna do is grab your polygon tool and then just click somewhere and you want to have six sides and don't worry about the radius just yet just click that and get it out there um, then you know what I would do is just make it to the size that you want and we're gonna kinda just go about the same size here um, now when you when you click and drag this up you're gonna wanna hold shift to keep it in line and you're also gonna wanna hold alt to make a copy now watch when I when I press alt I get two cursors. There's a black and a white cursor that show. That just means I'm making a copy. And if you release, it made a copy. Now if you hit Control D, it's gonna make another copy. Um, every time you press Control D from here on, it will make a copy at the exact same distance that you made the first one. So just really helpful for making patterns and uh, quickly getting uh, multiple objects out that are the same and need to be the same distance apart and all that. Um, next thing you want to do is just grab this whole uh, column and then click and drag it. And, and, and you're going to have to eyeball this, but you know, about here is probably right. Something like that. And then just back up, make sure that looks pretty good. You know, it's pretty even. It's not perfectly even actually could probably come out to the right, just a hair. Um, but you know, these things are pretty hard to, to get perfect with your eye and even can be difficult to do with the tools in Illustrator because of the um, the staggeredness of the of the pattern we're making. But I, I like that, I think that will work. And then you can just grab this entire thing and do the same thing that we did with this first point, where is, which is you can just click out, holding shift, I'll hold alt to create a copy, that looks good, and then control D all the way across to make the full pattern, right? Looks pretty good, right? Now the other thing I would do, you know, what I did is uh, I colored these with a uh, radial gradient and I'll just use the eyedropper tool to show you what I what I did. This is the color I used. Um, here's the gradient set to radial. You wanna have this at about 30% <clears throat> and here's the values that I used in RGB and then here's the darker color. Um, feel free to use whatever you like, but those are the colors that I ended up using for this one. I was kind of mimicking a Jack Daniels honey bottle uh, when I did this, so that was kind of my inspiration for these colors. But, you know, if you want a little bit more a bright yellow or uh, more of even a golden color or something, you know, go for it. Do whatever you want. Um, the other thing that I would do at this point is, you know, kind of create this little staggered effect. So I, I ended up deleting just some of these points, you know, um, just kind of going along like this and uh, taking out these pieces. So I think I did something like this. Again, I'm just kind of mimicking what I've already made, something along those lines. Doesn't have to be exact. I mean, you just want random, but you know, that's fine. Let's just go with that. Maybe get rid of that one too. And then uh, we could get rid of a few of these down here. Um, you know, just make it look like it's kind of um, been taken out of a, of a larger beehive. You know, it's a segment of honeycomb. I think it looks cooler that way. Unless you're wanting this to go all the way across your backdrop. That could work too. Anyway, that, that looks fine. Let's just go with that. Boom. And <clears throat> then to make this sort of a casing that they're in, um, we'll just grab all of this 
select it all and copy and we'll paste to the front for now and then I, I would just say let's create it at um, all one color so I've kind of got this lighter yellow color here that I used and then I'm going to want to drag this out to um, create a, a stroke as well you can drag the fill and place it on the stroke or you can select stroke and then click here to fill it that way whatever works for you and then come over to your stroke setting and we're going to just kind of bump that up until about there maybe we we'll probably need to double that um let's go with 22 <clears throat> because on it'll overlap here but on the outsides we want it to be about the same thickness as it is on the inside so 22 should probably work just fine and then we're going to go object path outline stroke and then go to pathfinder and unite and it makes all one big piece like this okay and so now that that's all one big piece if i set it to the back you'll see what that did right but <clears throat> i don't actually want a solid shape here i want i want these pieces cut out and i'll show you why in a minute so let's go ahead and grab all of the hexagons that we made excuse me swallowing and <laughs> i'll just color it black so i can see what i'm doing i'm gonna go ahead and group those and let's cut that out of here so we want to do minus front on this one boom so now we have cut out that shape out of our honeycomb pattern in the back we've we've got these intact and we've got this now the next thing i did was I added a bevel effect. So um, let's just go in here. Effect 3D extrude and bevel. <clears throat> you just want to do it on the front. You want to add a bevel. And I just did classic. And I may have just done one point. We'll play with this. I can't remember what my settings were. Let's go ahead and hit preview and see what that did. And then go to more options. Um, this is where you're going to want to play. This is um, this is going to be where your light source is. And then you have your shading color is black, which probably works fine. I, what I tend to do on these is add a second light, clicking on this. And then I place it over here somewhere. And then I click this button, which sends that light to the back of the object. And that tends to give it a little bit of a light color on the edges, which... I tend to like and then move this around until it looks right I don't know if I like any of those selections or not let's just see what if we put it down here that might look okay some of this is hard to tell at this distance what you might have to do is just you know select something and then hit okay and then kind of look at it up close see what it looks like so you know we've got a nice lighter color here a darker color here it kind of makes it look like the the light sources on this side um, whereas on this one what I did maybe it's not quite as thick and looks like I didn't do quite as bright of a, a light source but you know we could we can tweak that let's just select this again once you've made it you can come into your appearance panel here and click on 3d extrude and bevel double click it to bring up the menu go ahead and click preview again and you might just bump up this uh, bevel to two. I think two looks a little nicer. And again, we might move this around. Maybe we do like that. Although, I don't know if I like that either. Maybe we do this and change some of the ambient light. That'll just make it to where there's um, less of a shadow going on. Okay, I'm, I'm liking the way that looks pretty good let's see what if we move this no I kind of liked it where it was and maybe change the highlight intensity no nah, it didn't really make much of a difference there let's just leave that back there and this can kind of come up here I'm happy with with that maybe where it was you know play with this guys this is just um kind of whatever looks good to you. You just want to have some variance here in the, the, the outer shell here so that it, that it just looks like there's a little depth in it. You know, that's all you're going for here. And so as you can see, these two don't look exactly the same. 
right? I had a little bit thicker stroke on this one than I did on this original I made. The distance between these was not quite the same. The color was not exactly the same on this outer spot. And I have a little bit different shading, but you know, not a huge deal. You can always tweak that later. But that is the gist of how you make uh, a honeycomb pattern, uh, vector pattern in Illustrator. Another thing you might do, once you get this done, you might come in here and do effect, maybe stylize drop shadow, or possibly an outer glow. Let's see what drop shadow looks like real quick. And I'll go ahead and hit preview. Okay, that's too much. Maybe I'll do 0 0.05 inches, 0 0.05 inches, maybe even 0 0.05 on that. Man, I'm gonna have that again. 0 0.025, and then maybe, maybe that's not quite severe enough, or too severe rather, 35%. So here's kind of what that looks like with a little bit of drop shadow. If you don't want to see that, you can come into your appearance panel and click the eyeball off of it. So, you know, just adds a little bit of raised effect to it. Here's without, here's with. Again, play with this all you want, guys, but that's the gist of making these kinds of patterns. You can do all kinds of shapes to make your own patterns. I just thought this would be a fun little quick tutorial. Um, so let me know what you guys thought. Leave some comments down below, questions. Let me know what you want to see. And again, if you are have not uh, liked, subscribed, or commented on a video, um, you can still enter uh, my sub uh, 1,000 subscriber giveaway that will be happening here uh, probably pretty soon. I just released that video last month and I've already got another almost 100 subscribers. So we've only got about 400 subscribers left to go before I get to 1,000. And really, I haven't had that many entries. So your chances of winning a free copy of Windows 10 um, is pretty high. So, um, all right, guys, see you in the next video.